everyone always talks about what you should be doing in gacha games like Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. Today, I am going to talk to you about what you shouldn't be doing. And how do I know this? I did all of these things. These are my mistakes. Don't be me. Listen, I know you can easily get them these days, and I personally am at a point where there's 40 some odd tokens in my inventory. But back in 2020, full awakening tokens were rare. And occasionally, the game would gift them to you. So I got one as a relatively new player in late summer 2020, just before Lost Vein's release. And I thought, hmm, who should I use it on? And I remembered reading online that Esterosa was good. So I used it on him. And then a friend of mine promptly went, so it was the green one, right? Red Esterosa is useless. To this day, Red Esterosa is useless. And yet, he was one of my first fully awakened characters because of this mistake. Lesson learned. Properly look into things before dumping your precious materials on a character. Unless it's a character you really like, then who cares? Back when I was first starting the game, I didn't have much inventory space. And I didn't have a lot of money either. In game, but also in real life. So I sold a few anvils and engraving stones. I didn't know how to use anvils, and the engraving stones just seemed like a far, way off sort of thing. It didn't matter. Except it did. It took me a couple months to really learn how to do gear. If you're a newer player and don't know how to do it, I'd suggest searching Grand Cross Gear Video on YouTube because many of the fine content creators here have made them and they are excellent. I wish I'd been as smart and at least saved them until I knew better. My anvils! I talked about this a bit in my breakdown video, so I'll keep it brief. I was saving gems, a new Festival King, the good one, was coming, so I didn't pull on the Ragnarok banner. At the time, Miguelda didn't seem very good, and I figured she'd come back, so whatever. The bird was impossible. Cue the game releasing Trader Melly a month later, making her that much better in conjunction with him. And cue me somehow missing her on every banner she was on. I was pulling my hair out trying to snag her, and only managed to do so after dumping a huge amount of silver coins into the race draw tickets, finally managing to get her. And needless to say, I made sure to get Jormungand. And then, I made a point of getting Thonar from the Step Up banner, even though the ReZero collab was happening as well. On the one hand, festival banners tend to be broken. On the other hand, this was back when Global was still relatively far behind JPKR. And we knew we were going to get the one Escanor, and they'd just gotten Assault Mode Meliodas too. Additionally, we hadn't gotten Sariel and Tarmiel yet, so we were due Archangels at some point. And with the KOF units in the game, the old Fest King wasn't really worth it since his one team could be countered easily. He'd already fallen out of the meta in Global before he'd even been released. But, me being me, I figured they'd drop the Easton and Valenti we'd been missing, and I really wanted King's Bear to punch things. So I pulled, totally tanking my gem reserves. Two weeks later, Sariel and Tarmiel dropped, and I scrambled to get enough gems together to get through that banner. From then on, I pretty much decided that unless I was hyped for a Fess unit or the banner, it was okay for me to skip it. I skipped the 2022 Fess Merlin banner, and I did wonders for my gem reserves. Is she a really cool unit? Oh yeah, definitely! She absolutely claps me from time to time in PvP. But is she one that I plan on running? Not really. Okay, this one's a near miss, but it's still a dumb move, and I spent the entire time going through his banner gritting my teeth and grumbling. I was set on skipping Festival Esterosa, or as I lovingly call him, Festerosa. I didn't run demon teams. His commandment didn't seem that great for PvP teams in general, so it was kind of like, who cares? Who cares? I should skip and save gems. I'm never going to run him in PvP. And I'm still smarting from that red Esterosa fiasco two years later. Then I scrolled through Reddit and read that someone was using him in the Dear Demonic Beast battle with Traitor Melly, and they were actually a great combo. So here's the thing. Up until that point, I'd never managed to clear the deer entirely. I'd gotten close with a few different comps, but never cleared it. So my interest was piqued, and after a few other people confirmed it, I threw my hands in the air and got to pulling. I had to go all the way to the pity for him, but as a bonus, I did get Cusack to 3-6, so now his ult has a nice little abyss effect on it. As a treat to me, of course. <sighs> but they were right. 
Once I leveled him up and made some UR gear for him, Festerosa ruled at the deer. My party to this day is him, Trader Melly, Jormungand, and Freyr, and I can constantly, consistently clear the deer with relative ease. It's easier than the bird for me, honestly. When the game dropped the Demonic Beast costumes for the Demon Brothers, I absolutely grabbed his deer pelt. He'd earned it. The thing is, from this, I learned that I really need to keep an eye on those units and also think about their PvE potential, especially for the Demonic Beasts. If I'd been thinking in those terms, I would have pulled on Festerosa from the beginning. Was he good for it? Yeah. Did I already basically have the rest of the team built? Yeah. I complained a lot as I pulled on the banner, and these are just a few of the caps from actual conversations I had throughout the process, and he made me go all the way to the pity. But I got him, and I hate to say it, but it was worth it. My little dear slayer, go skin Bambi for me. And now, the honorable mention. This is a your mileage may vary mistake, but I've had green demon Meliodas since his first banner, and I never bought his cosmetics. You know, the ones that guarantee Howlex appearing? Yeah, those. I didn't have the gems at the time, and Howlex was difficult, so that was understandable. But when they came back in 2021, I grabbed Jericho and Elizabeth's, but I ignored Meliodas's because they were ugly. Listen, I'm only human. I'm shallow. I want my characters looking good. And yet, here I am now, trying to level the rest of my box up to level 80 at least, and while I can pick the gray and gray demons, I cannot guarantee Halex at all. And it sucks. Majority, you may say. Why not grind the Hell Raids instead? The normal ones are useless at this point because there are frequent events and you can buy the parts in the coin shop. Uh, to which I say, yeah, your mileage may vary. For me, it was a mistake because I am so close to getting my entire box to level 80. So close. But I do not have a mountain of Halex parts. Needless to say, I'm recording this just before the New Year's festival, and um, those cosmetics are on my shopping list for next week. <laughs> so hopefully by the time this video gets posted, those suckers will be in my pocket and Meliodas will be super ugly. And that's it for my biggest mistakes. Admittedly, most of them were skipping or not skipping banners, but at least I've been having fun. And more importantly, I learned to love and embrace Esterosa. Come here, you stinky man. You may look like my cousin's weed dealer, but you know what? You're great at carving up the venison, and that's all anyone can ask for. On one hand, festival banners tend to be broken. On the other hand, this was back when Global was still... F*** me, start over.